Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads inaugurates a new fall season with the great Rogers and Hammerstein musical success, State Fair, starring Gordon McRae and his guest from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another thrilling musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Mama Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, our show train is loaded with melody and magic by Rogers and Hammerstein. When you add some high C's by lovely Dorothy Kirsten, well, we think that's something to shout about. What do you say, everybody? Where are we bound for? The state fair! Our state fair is a great state fair. Don't miss it, don't even be late. this mincemeat out to the car. Oh, do you, you think I got a chance for first prize this year, Abel? If I was the judge, you'd get it. <laughs> Abel, what's that in your pocket? Now, Mo. Oh, you haven't been using my best hairbrush on that hog. The blue boy's no hog. He's a prize hamster boy, and he's gonna win the blue ribbon at the state fair. Oh, Margie, is that you? Yes, Ma. It's me. Don't you feel good, child? I'm all right, I guess. I don't really know what's wrong with me. I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever. But I know it isn't spring. I am sorry I'd and vaguely discontented. Like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever when it is?
you think she needs, Ma? Sulfur and molasses? Oh, Pa. I know what'll fix her up. Three days at the state fair. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put Blue Boy in his pen. Come on, Blue Boy. Come on. Can I go to the Midway Mall? Yes, just don't be too late getting back, Margie. <laughs> All right, step right up, get your tickets for the most thrilling roller coaster ride in the world. Hurry, hurry. Gee. What's the matter, Bobby Locks? Haven't you got the money for a ride? Oh, sure, but I'm afraid of the roller coaster. Oh, come on, we'll ride it together. Climb aboard, Bobby Locks. But I I don't even know your name. I'm Pat Gilbert. There, now we're old friends. But hang on, but... here we go. <laughs> Comes the big one. Uh, how did you like it? Oh, I'm glad you were there to hang on to. You practically pulled the lapels <laughs> off my coat, Bobby Lock. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call me Bobby Lock? Because uh, when you walk, your hair bounces up and down on the back of your neck. Everybody's hair bounces up and down. Oh, mine doesn't. I mean, girls. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing. All these people are out here, Bobby Locks, and I can only see one girl. Now, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, now, please. You've got to call me Pat. Look, I-, I made a mistake. This isn't a good night for roller coaster rides at all. You know what? It's a grand night for singing. The moon is flying high. Somewhere a bird who is found, he'll be heard, is throwing his heart at the sky. Grand night for singing. The stars are bright above. The earth is a glow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love. Falling, in love. Maybe it's more than the moon. Maybe it's more than the bird. Maybe it's more than the sight of the night in a light too lovely for words. Maybe it's more than the earth. Shining in silvery blue. Maybe the reason I'm feeling this way has something to do with you. What are you afraid of? Well, we really don't know very much about each other. Well, then maybe we should find out. What's your name? Margie. Margie Frake. I live on a farm with my folks. How about you? Oh, I'm just a reporter on the local paper. But I'll be a columnist someday with my own byline. Yes, sir. Any day now, I'm expecting a call from a big paper in Chicago. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> oh, Margie. Is that you? Yes, Ma. I'll be right in. Uh, this is where you're staying? We're sort of camping out in a trailer. Uh, see you again. Well, I... Or do you want to say, let's break it up? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, do you? Oh, look. Any time I want to throw in the sponge, you'll know it. I just won't be around. But we're going to have some high old times together, Bobby Locke. How do you know? Why, I could tell from the very first time I, I got a look at you. 
Turn with the second act of State Fair in just a moment. We all know how important distance conquering devices like the telephone, the telegraph, and radio are in daily living. In no less degree, facilities for instant communication between far distant points play a vital role in the daily work of our railroads. For railroads are not an industry surrounded by walls, but a complex network of rails and facilities extending into every section of the country and manned by well over one and a quarter million employees. Knitting this far-flung system of trains, terminals, yards, offices, and shops into one smooth-working whole calls for a comprehensive, ever-operating communications service on every railroad, one of the most extensive installations of the sort in any industry. Through the use of telegraph, teletype, telephone, radio, microwave, and many modern electronic marvels, Constantly sending and receiving directives and information, railroad men are able to speed freight cars to loading docks, to assemble them into trains, and to clear the tracks for swift through travel. In short, to do more rapidly and with greater safety all the things required to give our nation an unmatched mass transportation service. Since the first telegraphic train order was transmitted a hundred years ago, shortly after the invention of the telegraph, the railroads have been among the first to install new and better means of communication. This process continues with quickened pace today. And one of the ways is through the efforts of railroad men who are always working to devise new methods of communicating and to improve existing ones. This week, members of the communications section of the Association of American Railroads, men from both the United States and Canada, are meeting in Quebec to exchange ideas and experiences in connection with their vital work. From sessions like this come better communications, 
all part of the endless effort of the railroads to achieve even greater efficiency and safety in operations. We continue with the Lawrence and Lee version of Rogers and Hammerstein's State Fair, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Kirsten. You know, a funny thing happens when you meet a girl who really knocks you off your feet. You can't help wondering why it is that you have spring fever. When it is spring. I am starry, I am vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever when it isn't even spring? I keep wishing I were somewhere else Walking down a strange new street Hearing words that I have never heard From a girl I've yet to meet I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud Or a robin on the wing But I feel so gay in a melancholy way That it might as well be spring it might as well be spring. Well, Bobby Locks, what are you going to do when the fair's over? Oh, go back home, I guess, and maybe get married. You aren't engaged, are you? There's a boy I've been going with for a long time. Think you'll ever get married, Pat? Oh, me? Sometimes, I guess. But, you know, things like, like this, like us, you, you, you kind of keep them from getting too serious. You're absolutely right, Pat. Maybe you'll never be the love of my life. Maybe I'm not the girl of your dreams. But isn't it kind of fun to look in each other's eyes, swapping romantic dreams? Maybe I'm not a girl to hold and to have. Maybe you're not a boy who would stay. But isn't it kind of fun carousing around the town, dancing the nights away? And isn't it kind of fun holding? Hand. According to a sweet and corny custom Isn't it kind of fun making vows Admitting that we both intend to bust them Maybe we're out for laughs, a girl and a boy Kidding across the table for two But haven't you got a hunch that this is the real McCoy and all the things we tell each other are true. Hey, isn't it almost time for judging your father's hog? And Ma's mince meat. Come on, Pat. We've got to get over there to the judging stand. <laughs> Judging of Hampshire Boars, Grand Championship Class. Come on, Blue Boy, get up. Oh, he's just lying there on his side. Is he sick? Love sick. That's his trouble. 
Blue boy got mighty sweet on a sow in the pen next to his. Now she ain't around and he's carrying the torch. Oh, here come the judges. You gotta do something, Paul. Hey, hey, blue boy. Look, there's your lady friend. That's the spirit, blue boy. Look proud. No hog on four feet can beat you now. <laughs> Frank, I'm so nervous. Now, Mother. After you and Blue Boy walking off with all those blue ribbons, my cooking has to get at least an honorable mention. We know you're the best cook in the world, Ma, even if those old judges don't. Quiet, please. First prize for sweet pickles goes to Mrs. Edwin Metcalf of Pottsville. Oh, that old Mrs. Metcalf got all the prizes. Oh, come on, Abel, let's go. And now the Distinguished Achievement Award. Wait a minute, Melissa. Don't go yet, Ma. The judges vote unanimously to give that award to a lady who has concocted the most delicious mincemeat... Mincemeat. ...ever entered in a state fair. Mrs. Melissa Frank <gasps> of Brunswick. Oh, no. <laughs> Ma, aren't you proud? Well, it's enough for me that my family likes my cooking. But if it's the best in Iowa, oh, dear, I, I think I'm going to cry. Pat, Pat, did you hear who won all the prizes? Oh, you mean you are? I'm so proud and grateful, I just don't know what to do. Well, you'd better tip your hat to the state you live in, that's what. Oh, I know all I owe, I owe, I owe. See you tonight, Bobby Locks? If you want to. I'll meet you by the Calliope in front of the roller coaster. Eight o'clock. I'll be there. Margie? Hello, Pa. Why, we've been looking all over for you. I was supposed to meet somebody. He promised faithfully he'd be right here by the roller coaster. Well, everybody's going home now, baby. The fair's over. Oh, he must have just forgotten. Yes, I guess that's it, Pa. That must have been what had happened. Look, Bobby Locks, any time I want to throw in the sponge, you'll know it. I just won't be around. Pa, please take me home. Whatever is the matter with that girl, Abel? She hasn't been the same since we came back from the fair. No, I got a feeling that Margie's suffering from the same ailment Blue Boy had. Paul, oh, 
Do you think that young reporter fellow... Hogs are people. The love bug bites them all sooner or later. <clears throat> there goes the telephone. Oh, Margie, will you answer it? All right, Ma. Frake's residence. Margie, is that you? Pat, where are you calling from? You got to forgive me, Bobby Locks. I got that Chicago job. Is that where you're calling from, Chicago? No, no, I'm right here in town. I came to ask if you'd marry me. Oh, Pat, I can't believe it. You don't have to believe it. Just say you love me. Oh, I do, Pat. I do. I'll be pulling in your driveway in three minutes. Hurry, hurry. Ma, Pa, I'm going to get married. What? Before supper? <laughs> I feel have me. Gee, do you realize what's happened? I got the best prize in the whole state fair. It's, it's a grand night for singing. The moon is flying high. And somewhere a bird is now newly heard. Is throwing his heart at the sky. It's a grand night for singing. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. Our thanks to Paula Winslow, Griff Barnett, Jerry Hausner, Carlton Young, and our entire company. State Fair by Rogers and Hammerstein was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee and presented by a special arrangement with 20th Century Fox, producers of the Technicolor production Golden Girl, starring Mitzi Gaynor, Dale Robertson, and Dennis Day. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. You know, there's a lot of talk about high prices at my house these days. And friends sometimes ask me if railroad freight rates play an important part. And now that's one question I know something about. And I can tell you this. Railroad freight rates are the caboose on the train of rising prices. The tag end that's inevitably pulled along by the rest of the train. As a well-known business publication said recently, don't blame the cost of carrying freight for boosting prices. It just isn't so. It's just wonderful being back aboard the show train, Gordon. Well, Dorothy, we're certainly glad to have you out here on the West Coast with the San Francisco Opera. And here's an engraved invitation to be with us for six weeks in the months of October and November for such wonderful shows as the Opera Martha, Cole Porter's Jubilee, Rudolph Frimmel's Rosemary, the lovely opera Bohemian Girl, plus Holiday Inn, and Mademoiselle Modiste. <laughs> invitation accepted, Gordon. They sound like exciting shows. Well, we learned something from that champ blue boy, Dorothy. While you're starring with the San Francisco Opera, we're going to hog you. <laughs> oh, Gordon, you say the most wonderful thing. <laughs> What's on the show train next week? The lovely opera to Madame Sherry, Dorothy, and the lovely Nadine Connor will be our guest. We'll all be listening. And Dorothy will see you two weeks from tonight. It's a date, blue boy. Thank you. <laughs> all aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The preceding was transcribed. It's the telephone hour next with...